to recap, sure. uh, Paradigm Robotics, that's your startup, has developed a robot called the Firebot, right? And it's to protect the brave men and women fighting fires every day by keeping them out of the fire itself, right. you know? Hey, let's let's go a little bit, let's go into a bit of technical detail. Sure. If you, if you will. Yeah. Just without providing like anything to proprietary. Describe how the robot works. Sure. Uh, from you know the the the, um, the firefighter beginning to operate it to going into the building and coming out and all that stuff. Just sure. How does it work? Great question. So let's talk about a use case of Firebot. So mm -hmm. at the scene of a structural fire, the fire truck pulls up. What we're building right now is integration with fire truck manufacturers, mm -hmm. where Firebot is deployed from the side of the fire truck. And so what we have is one firefighter is a dedicated robot operator. And so they have what we call our firefighter control interface. It's a unit that's designed to control Firebot wirelessly and remotely from a very significant distance, up to five miles in line of sight, and up to one mile away and no line of sight with several concrete walls in between. And so what you have is firefighters are rapidly deploying Firebot. They bring out this interface and they start driving it immediately into the structure. There's very little time delay because speed is of the essence, right? Mm -hmm. And so firefighters are driving the robot into the structure. Let's take a look at what Firebot looks like. Firebot is an unmanned ground vehicle. It's about the size of, I mean, you can see on camera, maybe about this big here. Yeah. And so Firebot is designed to be small enough to enter structures, doorways, crevices, and cracks, while at the same time being beefy enough and rugged. And so Firebot is a tracked vehicle. It's a mm -hmm. robot. And these tracks essentially allow it to climb stairs, obstacle, and debris. It has what we call flipper arms on the front and back of the robot to allow it to circumvent these obstacles. Um, it's very rugged. It's built from you know a lot of different metals, a lot of complex alloys to help it survive these temperatures and environments. Uh, it's jam-packed with sensors. So there's optical sensors like normal cameras. There's mm -hmm. thermal cameras. Um, there is temperature, humidity sensors, there's hazmat sensors for volatile organic compounds, gases, toxic elements, chemicals, things like this. There's smoke, flame, fire sensors. There's odometry and telemetry, everything sort of under the sun. It's a jam-packed robot. Mm -hmm. And so the firefighter is seeing all this data come back on their control interface. Yeah. And so now they're using joysticks to wirelessly drive the robot into the structure. What does a firefighter do? Using the same techniques they learned as they were doing it by hand, they do with the robot. The robot quickly drives into the structure, following the right-hand rule, searching all the rooms on the right side or the left side, doing thorough searches with its camera scanning the structure, looking for victims, identifying toxic gases, elements, or hazardous situations. They drive it through all the rooms, right? They search very, very thoroughly. If they need to go up to the second floor or third floor or over rubble, they use the flipper arms to drive up the stairs and climb over debris. They conduct thorough and efficient searches everywhere in the building before certifying it, right, that they've conducted mm -hmm. their primary search. What happens if they find someone? If they find someone, there's either two categories, if they're conscious or unconscious. If the victim is conscious, which is of a slim minority, typically, the Firebot has two-way audio and speakers. So you can communicate with the victim from the firefighter, tell them, stay safe, help is on the way. Or you can tell them there might be a path to safety and Firebot can lead them out if there's a nearest entrance or egress that's not blocked by debris or too dangerous. The other key thing, right, if the victim is unconscious, as Firebot has GPS, location mapping, as well as a siren and strobe light. And so firefighters can quickly identify the precise location of the robot, find the nearest entrance or egress or path to the robot, find the victim, and take them to safety. Mm -hmm. And so now what you have is Firebot has ways to both quickly find conscious or unconscious victims, as well as by doing this faster than a firefighter could by quickly alerting of where that exact location is. And then it can continue its search operations. So that's what the use case of a firebot would look like. We hope to do this at twice the speed of a firefighter. We can move twice as fast as them. We can search through our cameras many, many times faster than their eyes. And I mean, sorry, they can't even see inside a fire many times faster mm -hmm. than their hands can search. Yeah. And so now what we're doing is we're taking that six to seven minute search time and making it three minutes. Yeah. And so that's three minutes more that a human inside could be found alive. And so that's how we're helping these civilians get a higher chance of coming home safely. Yeah, uh, sounds. Do you have an idea of um, 
Uh, I have a few questions about this, sure. the way this works. And don't worry, I won't go into too much no detail into your technology itself. Go for it. Do you have any idea of how many firebots will be needed depending on the structural size or the number of levels yeah. in the structure? Great question. Uh, what we estimate right now as per our, our designs is that for the average residential structure, so about 22,000 square feet, one firebot will be needed. And so this is a two-floored structure. This is your average house, your average, you know, mm -hmm. three to four bedroom multi story 20, house. 2,200? Oh, sorry. So, yeah. Yeah, 2,200. Yeah. 2,200 square yeah. foot, okay. That's sort of what we're targeting here. Of course, it's up to the discretion of firefighters. Mm -hmm. What we're hoping to provide is one firebot at every fire truck. So you just have to essentially look at what is the average amount of fire trucks that come to your average structural fire. Yeah. Typically, it's two. It's going to be more as the fire gets worse, as, as things spread. And so that means that there will probably be two firebots on scene. Yeah. That's what we expect for the quickest and fastest search. For structures that are three, floor, four, five, six floors, we want multiple firebots deployed. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, our goal is one firebot for every fire truck. This essentially equates to two firebots every fire station. So in the US, there's about 59,000 fire stations. And so you can quickly do the math and that's how many sort of firebots we want to deploy to ensure the safety of you know communities around America. 59,000? Uh, approximately, yeah. Wow. And so that's actually only self the self-reported fire stations. Unfortunately, there isn't a, a, a dedicated database registry of all fire departments and fire stations. And what? so the, the true number is probably significantly higher. Why is that? Why, is, there, is there a reason for keeping some of these locations secret or? I, I think it's mainly just a lack of uh, cohesiveness, consolidation, centralization. A lot of these fire departments were around since the 1600s or 1700s. Some of them were around since the last 20, 30 years. And there's never been like a legal federal requirement to report. Mm -hmm. And so the U.S. Fire Administration, the National Fire Protection Agency, the two biggest uh, U.S. fire agencies, they have began creating these databases. And mm -hmm. they're pretty accurate, I'd say. They have most of them. But 59,000 is the current number. And I'm sure it's a couple thousand more um, if you really dig into it. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, it's funny when you find out about uh, industries or spaces that are just so stuck in the past, and fire, apparently firefighting is one of them. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's absolutely. crazy. And, and and the frequency is, I mean, if you want to imagine the frequency at which these structural fires are occurring, it's one every 65 seconds. So in our conversation today, if it lasts an hour, there is 60 fires, structural fires across the U.S. Wow. One every 65 seconds. Yep. And so that number is only increasing. Uh, mm. That was actually the numbers for 2020. Uh, they come out with the reports two years backdated. So I'll get you the yeah. numbers for 2021. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 